Just gonna run some ideas by in there, buddy. Thank you for listening to me. Um, so anyway, I'm just pointing out, um, remember I was telling you there about uh, becoming a co facilitator, and you know the big old binder I have um, upstairs with the unicorn and the rainbows on it. Well, in it. <clears throat> In the group model that has been around for, I don't know how long, certainly that was around when I learned it, it says develop a safety contract. And this is something that actually happens on day one. Right? And it says. So we've gone over the key concepts. And here's what I know, right? The originators. Bo, are you listening to me or are you paying attention? So anyway, Bo, I'll just keep telling you because I know you can listen and deal with your distraction. But the originators of uh, the model, right? <clears throat> they said that once we get over those five key concepts the next step is to develop a safety contract and the material that's been used for I don't know how long says because of the circumstances of their lives many of the participants may have issues with trust and may be worried about their safety in the group and so we can help relieve some of these worries by developing a group safety contract right away even before we have participant introductions um and then assure you know our participants that we expect them to abide by the safety contract and that i or you will abide by it as well right and then it suggests having a flip chart markers ask participants to tell us what they need to feel safe in the group and write their ideas using the actual wording that the participant uses so avoid paraphrasing or reducing if it is necessary to summarize a statement so that it will fit on the flip chart try to get the participant to come up with the wording. Bo, did that happen to me? No. So people really feel validated uh, by having their own words heard, and that's in quotes, Bo. You can try, or you can give them a few ideas. Well, that's not what I heard yesterday, Baba. I heard someone get triggered by Baba. So, you know, ideally we're assuring folks that new items can be added to the safety contract whenever necessary and that they should let us know if they want to do that. So if there will be several meetings of your workshop or group, you could remind people of the safety contract at the beginning of each meeting and ask them if they have any additions or modifications to make. So following is a safety contract developed by participants, right? No criticism, 
of self for others. That's an interesting word, Bubba. Criticism. Papa's going to write that down. Criticism. C-I-S-M. So, no. You know how much people love to hear that? Be open to listening to others. Confidentiality. Don't tell others who have attended. Speak without offending. Listen without defending. Speak without offending. Because remember when Papa said that um, how I was feeling was kind of negative and how I was thinking about terms like, you know, complaint departments and that I really wasn't feeling like I could handle complaints. Right, Baba? Um, so that's a part of it. So speak without offending. And listen without defending. Oh my gosh, how did this? Who came up with that, right? If only we could breach the confidentiality of the originators. Or if we knew someone who was there, right? And then he says, appreciate the strengths of others. My gosh. I gotta write that down because, oh my gosh. Appreciate the strengths. But, Bobo, why is that exciting? Oh. Why is that exciting? Because. Yeah, that's like. Oh. 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 Why is that exciting? It's exciting because we're strength space, right? That's what we're trained in. That's what we do. Okay. So, strengths. And then. Be aware of schedule. Avoid dominating the conversation. Hmm. One person speaks at a time. No background chatting. No cross talk. I'm really going to have to understand what that means. Bye bye. No cross talk. Hmm. I wonder what that means. Using I statements. Uh, take good care of yourself. Be tolerant of emotional expression by others. Oh, I think that's really important. B, because that's an action. Tolerant. Of emotional Expression by others. No assumptions. Gosh, this is coming out of nineteen ninety seven. You're back during the town. Okay. Withhold judgments. Wow. You'd almost think people kind of felt like other people might have a hard time with this sometimes. 
So with holes, judgments. And okay. Well, that's awesome. So that's one dash eighty. Right? That's good to know. Okay. Girl, try to do the makeup thing. Right. You know, take to the makeup. Well, right. Okay. Yeah, back to it. Okay. I think this next part is probably important. Uh, let's actually see. So develop safety contract versus agreement. Okay. So the brand new materials as participants are often anxious about sharing personal information with the group. I know I am. They may worry whether what they share will remain confidential, or they may have a difficult time trusting others to open up, right? Or opening up. And so they need to feel safe before they are comfortable being vulnerable. And it's also a vital component to trauma recovery. For this reason, the group will work together to develop a safety agreement, sometimes called participant guidelines, or a comfort agreement. Its purpose is to help participants feel as safe and comfortable in the seminar as possible. To build trust. For self advocacy, essentially, is what it boils down to. Explain that everyone, including each facilitator, is expected to follow the safety agreement. To begin, use diesel paper. Okay, then invite participants to share things to add to the list that would help them feel safe and comfortable throughout the seminar. Write the answers following the response inscribing process described earlier. That's a very vital process. Right? That's part of why we train. That's part of why we want to engage with the material. After everyone agrees with the list, post the agreement in a prominent place for easy reference throughout all sessions. So I guess my big question is how what does that agreement mean right because how do we agree to a list if we are actually contributing as a group and and we're being open to others ideas right so for me i i think i look back to that intentional the original intent right and so the agreement is more an agreement that we've all had a chance to participate who'd like to participate and that what has been captured has been what was experienced in the room right without debate because we ain't putting our stank 
on other people's stink. While embracing that shit happens, right? Post it in a prominent place for easy reference. So I'm thinking in the chat box, right? At the beginning of each session. And if a person repeatedly ignores the safety agreement, speak with them privately and follow the values and ethics of RAP in that conversation. Note, items can be added anytime during the seminar. Each session should begin with a review of the safety agreement so participants can make changes. If something in the agreement doesn't isn't being followed, facilitators can take time at any point in the seminar to go over the list and let participants comment. Yeah, that didn't happen for me, Baba. Okay, so. Let's create a circle. Here you to see. The Alright, so. This was the. I'm gonna create that circle. So if I'm looking at yesterday. But in how I responded, and how how I was perceived. Right? And it's actually that that fucking symbol for me. Because I responded with humility, grace, patience, and 100% authentic. And some fucking clinician took exception to that during an activity to cultivate safety and I communicated Bo what was going on for me I also communicated that I was going to listen in and be off camera but keep my camera on. And I did that, Bo. Remember? Remember me taking care of my needs? You helping me? Do you remember listening to what everybody said after that and how we felt? Remember how you supported me the rest of the day and today? And now, in this, to piece it together? So, I would say that I handled myself really well under the circumstances. Right? I don't know if I feel the same about the group, so, right? I need to assess my safety. And I, I'm pretty sure it isn't in that group. Because I think, I don't think everybody has an understanding of why they are there, Baba. Right? Okay. So that's that. And then, 
let's take a little break. A little tea, coffee break. Okay, and we'll do the next bit. Ooh, what you want, baby, I tell you. What you need, oh, darling. All I'm asking is for a little respect. Oh, baby, baby, when you come home. All right, so looking at my personal responsibility as a facilitator. Okay. So I'm going to write it down as personal. Responsibility. So, facilitate the evidence hyphen based. Most recent version of the material shared. As if it's brand new for all yet deeply rooted in proof there are no limits and recovery. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, right. In a way, any all participants can. receive with meaningful understanding Understand each participant is complete. 
completely unique nor required to provide me with additional clarification if they do not feel it will result in further understanding. and commit to accountability to sort it out mutually while Centering participants needs in a way that adheres to the program. Right? And then respect. So it's my responsibility to respect that respect is also a unique experience which requires mutual communication and potential Respect for ourselves and others supports peers with experience in self advocating Others may be personalizing undetected. Re 
resulting in bias. <laughs> Examples. Ignoring not paying attention not validating condescending Demanding response calling on you to respond in some way. Oh, this is a good one. Asking you what you feel and telling you that's not the way you should feel. So asking you. And then telling you. I'm going to summarize it that way. Because this is my fucking book. Patronizing and hypnotizing behavior. Stigmatizing Stigmatizing or inappropriate So love, I'm sad because it really hurt my feelings yesterday and then this kind of just affirms that I wasn't in a safe place and that that's probably not a safe place for daddy, right? Ironically, Bubba. It happened on the 60th day that your daddy implemented the safety contract in every group he does. So there's that. And 60 is a big number. And I'm going to try to find 60 people that will give me a word of hope. All right. Bo. Bubba. I'm gonna recap. Hey everybody, my name is Angus and I also go by Angus by Design. And I was just workshopping um, something that happened to me yesterday. 
And what happened was I was in a group meeting where the people in the group um, really were all equipped with information that I had and probably uh, for a lot of them anyway, um, way before I had that information, right? So all I can do is kind of rely on my own self and sort of motivating the spaces that I'm in because again, right? I'm just an artist. I'm just a person with lived experience. I discovered rap in 2019 when I discovered Mary Ellen Copeland's story. And when I need the resource and knew exactly what landed in my lap because it was exactly what I needed and what I was seeking. And the reason for that for me was because um, Mary Ellen Copeland was probably the most understanding and least threatening human being I could even think of in my world. And her story actually inspires hope, right? For people just like me. Uh, so anyway, I digress, but yesterday I was in a meeting where we were reviewing the idea of a safety contract, right? And I'm going to have to go back and look at the way that I did it when I um, facilitated it in person for the first time. Uh, I certainly know how I did it from 2019 until now. I certainly understand how I learned it versus how I do it and then certainly how I encouraged others to learn it um, but I also know the impact on what it means when we have a panel of experts that isn't the PhD award-winning person who wrote the material thinking that their way of doing it has been going on for so long that that's the way to do it and someone who comes along and has a different point of view or looks a different way um, that they must be part of the problem and we get to all just you know piggy pile on the identity or the politic of the situation well i'm not part of either of those right i am angus wright certified peer specialist and just as equal just as entitled to the books published and meant for people to receive. Not organizations, not government grant loving lovers of money, not rescue mission pioneers and egotists. People in recovery who need the tools, just like I did when I asked for them and didn't receive them. So anyway, I uh, thought, well, hey, shit, I own books. So I went and started to look at them and I made some notes. So I'm not gonna get into all that. But I will say this. One dash eighty talks about criticism, speak without offending, listen without defending, appreciate the strengths of others, no crosstalk, be tolerant of emotional expression by others, uh, no assumptions and withhold judgment. Right? And then in my book created a little image using a nice little circle and in my control I put how I responded in that moment and out of my control I put how I was perceived all right I'm not going to give anybody a, a recipe on how to continue to violate my safety even if it is just my own personal sense and they don't feel like I'm entitled to it I don't have to be polite for that nor will I so what's in my control is to look at the original material again, written by the same effing person who wrote the update with the support and love of the people that are rolling out her vision. 
Um, but I wrote down personal responsibility of Angus as a facilitator inspired by that material. I'm going to facilitate the evidence-based most recent version of the material, shared as if it's brand new for all, yet deeply rooted in proof that there are no limits to recovery in a way any and all participants can receive with meaningful understanding. I'm going to understand each person uh, is completely unique and nor are they required to provide me with additional clarification if they do not feel it will result in further understanding and commit to accountability to sort it out mutually while centering participants needs in a way that adheres to the program. Respect that respect is also a unique experience which requires mutual communication and potential discomfort and respect for ourselves and others supports peers with experience in self-advocating when others may be personalizing undetected which is resulting in bias and examples are of behaviors that are really problematic within facilitators in the community are things like uh, ignoring and not paying attention to certain participants not validating everybody equally uh, condescending and power imbalance so it was really kind of cool for me to watch a room full of quote-unquote professionals uh, literally high-fiving and forgiving each other reassuring each other that it's okay because they're on a path right uh, demanding responses and calling on you to respond in some way so I mean during a safety agreement I would think that if somebody says I'm complete I don't know I'm not professional but I'd say that should mean that they are fucking complete no matter what we think right because if we're all in the same fucking room as professionals so to speak then we should all be acting accordingly so let's all just pretend like all of us are aware when we're not all right, and let's not call people out again and again and again if we're not going to just, you know, openly critique everybody, right? Uh, and then, so asking you, then telling you, right? So that's not. So, you know, for me, what I experienced was, hey, could you clarify that? Could you tell us again and again and again? And then, oh, next person, oh, yeah, I think blah, 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 blah. Let's piggy pile this. <laughs> right you weren't looking for information to resolve or to have a mutual understanding you were looking to pick something and I wasn't it won't be it suck it and then patronizing and infantizing behavior absolutely yeah I wish we could have captured right in recording I think that's actually probably Having a self-awareness of the things that we say in reaction to perceived slights to the group probably is a good tool. And then stigmatizing or other inappropriate behavior, right? So what I find is that I don't, I've not met a job title where the person hasn't had lived experience, right? What I did notice though is that I did some art and what I did was I created uh, something. In reflection and then um, after that I did some research after that I did some chatting with friends right and I will continue to do it but it was super interesting I'll tell you that I certainly enjoyed this morning's workshop of going over this information so what does that mean for me well it means that I'm likely just going to listen in for the next couple. I'm certainly going to message my co-facilitating leaders and say that I'm not there for that. And if they need to sort of validate 
my experience in some way that satisfies them or their their organization then we can actually start to look at ways for me to complete the practicum in a way that actually respects my dignity right um, I just want to say right now because the more I accept when it comes to my gifts the less uh, I accept when people are stepping on them, right? And uh, most recently, I've had a lot of professionals who personally benefit more than I do trying to call me in, call me out, or to analyze why I won't continue to give and give and give, right? And to give graciously. So I'm going to continue to um, really kind of learn and understand and, and uh, contextualize uh, Kimberly Crenshaw's uh, intersectionality and the human experience. And I'm going to look at all of those ways in which we have power and privilege uh, and how people, you know, may and do use identity politic uh, for their own purposes and that that doesn't just mean one segment of our population doing it. And I'll, I'll continue to speak to power because, again, I'm not a professional. I am a person with experience. And I'm there for me. And I'm self-sponsored. Non-agency peer service. Right? I don't get paid for your shit. So keep it. All right. Peace out. I'm Angus. I also go by Angus by Design. I also just like to reflect and show that, you know, while I, while I can get better and stay better while doing this work, it will never result in work for me because of stigma and institutionalized bullshit, right? I don't have to... I don't have to pretend. I don't have to mask that uh, I'm, I'm not invited in some way. So I'll be seeing you soon. Peace, peace, peace.